At this point, the question arises as to whether this personal creator of the universe has revealed himself in some special way that we might know him more fully. Well, Jesus of Nazareth claimed to be just such a special revelation of God, the God of Israel, whom Jews worshipped as the only true God and the creator of the universe. And Jesus validated his claim by his resurrection from the dead. Now, most lay people think that the resurrection of Jesus is something you just believe in by faith or not. But there are three facts recognized by the majority of New Testament historians today which provide good evidence for Jesus' resurrection. Fact number one, on the Sunday after his crucifixion, Jesus' tomb was found empty by a group of his women followers. Among the many reasons which have led most scholars to this conclusion are the following. One, the fact of the empty tomb is multiply and independently attested by early sources. Two, the empty tomb narrative shows no significant signs of legendary development or embellishment. Three, the fact that it is women whose testimony was regarded as worthless rather than men who are the discoverers of the empty tomb supports the historicity of the empty tomb narrative. Four, the earliest Jewish response to the proclamation of the resurrection presupposes the empty tomb. I could go on, but I think enough has been said to indicate why, in the words of Jakob Kramer, an Austrian specialist in the resurrection, and I quote, by far most scholars hold firmly to the reliability of the biblical statements concerning the empty tomb. Fact number two, on multiple occasions and under various circumstances, different individuals and groups experienced appearances of Jesus alive from the dead. This is a fact which is universally acknowledged by New Testament scholars for the following reasons. One, Paul's list of eyewitnesses to Jesus' resurrection appearances in his letter to the Corinthians dates to within five years after Jesus' crucifixion guaranteeing that such appearances were witnessed by various individuals and groups. Two, the appearance narratives in the Gospels provide multiple independent attestation of the various appearances. Even the skeptical critic Gert Ludemann therefore concludes, it may be taken as historically certain that Peter and the disciples had experiences after Jesus' death in which Jesus appeared to them as the risen Christ. Finally, fact number three, the original disciples suddenly and sincerely came to believe that Jesus was risen from the dead despite their having every predisposition to the contrary. Think of the situation the disciples faced following Jesus' crucifixion. Number one, their leader was dead and Jewish messianic expectations included no idea of a Messiah who, instead of triumphing over Israel's enemies, would be shamefully executed by them as a criminal. Two, according to Jewish law, Jesus' crucifixion as a criminal exposed him as a heretic, a man literally accursed by God. And three, Jewish beliefs about the afterlife precluded anyone's rising from the dead to glory and immortality before the general resurrection at the end of the world. Nevertheless, the original disciples suddenly came to believe so strongly that God had raised Jesus from the dead that they were willing to die for the truth of that belief. Luke Johnson of Emory University states, some sort of powerful transformative experience is required to generate the sort of movement earliest Christianity was. And N.T. Wright, an eminent British scholar, concludes, that is why, as an historian, I cannot explain the rise of early Christianity unless Jesus rose again, leaving an empty tomb behind him. In summary, then, there are three facts upon, agreed upon by the majority of scholars who have written on this subject, Jesus' empty tomb, his post-mortem appearances, and the origin of the disciples' belief. Down through history, various naturalistic explanations of the facts have been offered. For example, the conspiracy theory, the apparent death theory, the hallucination theory, and so forth. 
Such hypotheses have been almost universally rejected by contemporary scholarship. Given the failure of all naturalistic hypotheses, I think we're justified in inferring that the best explanation is the one given by the eyewitnesses themselves. God raised Jesus from the dead. The rational man can hardly be blamed if he concludes that on that first Easter morning, a divine miracle occurred. 